describe the steps the offensive line has taken, is taken rather from week one to right now? Um, you know, we just try and, you know, do our best every day, you know, in practice, you know, uh, keeping the physicality going, you know, just keeping the tempo, you know, because it all starts with the O line. So we just try and, you know, uphold that standard of being physical and coming off the ball and striking the tackle. So. How locked in are you guys for this game? I mean, I think Florida's maybe one and three in the SEC, you know, and maybe not at the level of uh, some of the teams that in past years that they've had. You know, I've learned throughout my years in college to never underestimate an opponent, no matter what their record is. So, you know, we come in every week and prepare the same as if we're playing in a national championship game, like it's the last game, you know, you want to give it your all. So we just come in with that mindset every week, ready to work, you know, stay focused on your um, opponents and, you know, lock in on your assignments and, you know, just try to do your best to understand the game plan and attack it. So. What does this Florida front make challenging for you guys, especially Brenton Cox, former Georgia player, who's been very productive for them? You know, it's just like, just like I said, you know, the last question is just, just like any other week, you know, you don't, look at a specific player and, you know, just try, try and figure out what to do with that specific player because you never know what can happen. They can bring somebody else in and, you know, they can be as disruptive as the last person. So, you know, you just got to lock into your game plan and, you know, trust the game plan, what the coach has implemented and um, just take it day by day and, you know, work on. It's all, it's all really about you, though. It's never really about the person that you're going against. You know, so if you if you trust your technique, you know, stay with the roots, and I think it'll be okay. What did you know about this rivalry growing up and, and before you got here as a player? I really, I really wasn't that big in the college football growing up. I'm not even gonna lie. So I, I was really more of a <laughs> basketball type of player. So I always thought I was gonna be a basketball player growing up. So I really never watched much football until like my 11th grade year, 10th, 11th grade year. That's when I really started, you know, like watch Georgia football and, you know, what they had going on and, you know, just trying to figure out, you know, where I wanted to end up. And, you know, I fortunately ended up here, you know, I believe I had a good run so far, you know, just trying to finish it out as strong as possible. Who's your favorite basketball player growing up? LeBron. LeBron. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just a new age era. So. so I know you played in high school and quite a few other guys did. Do you think is the best basketball player on this team? Me, hands down. <laughs> hands down. Well, well, then say it's Darnell. Then Darnell, yeah. Then <laughs> <laughs> Darnell. How's your game now? Have you been over to Ramsey? No, I, I ain't played basketball in so long. I think the jumper's still there, though, but I ain't played in a minute. So. <laughs> Darnell, playing with, uh, playing with Sowery the last two years and filling in for him, what do you think he's, you know, what do you think of his accomplishments in the NFL so far with the Chargers? You know, I think he's doing a great job, you know, just – being a rookie and, you know, just being able to start these past couple games and not giving up a sack, I think that's huge for him. You know, I think that ups his stock, you know, going into his next contract. And, you know, hopefully he can just continue to get better and grow as a person. So. What kind of things does, does Kirby and the other coaches maybe do to, for lack of a better word, enlighten you guys who, like you said, may not know a ton about this rivalry to explain why this is such a big deal, why the Florida game is different, maybe a little bit more special than other ones? Well, uh, it's really not anything, you know, like I've, uh, growing up, people always told me, you know, you never want to look at your opponent too much just mm -hmm. because of, you know, how the game goes. You mm -hmm. just always want to focus on yourself and you getting, being the best player you can be uh, for the team that day. So, you know, we really just try and lock in with us, like as a team, you know, working on what we need to do for the, the uh, game day and just being able to be prepared to play our best game so far. So, you know, every week we just go in with that mindset, you know, just get better and better. You know, 1% every day is, is a good thing. So we just try and keep that going. Does Coach Mart ever seem more geeked up this week, though? I mean, you know, <laughs> than another game. Well, I mean, Y'all know he's always geeked up. But I mean, yeah, that, that's every game, though, you know. Yeah. Like, he, you know, as a head coach, you know, his job is to win. So, you know, every week coming in, you know, he's going to be fired up. It, it don't matter who we play. It can be a, a D3 school, you know, it can be a – D2 school, you know, we're going to always be the same. You know, it's still the University of Georgia, so. What does Katie McIntosh bring to this offense as one of the voices and the leaders of that group? Explosiveness. Like, he's just, like, the way his game is played is, is crazy because he can catch, he can run out the backfield, he can run you over, he can hit you with a, any type of move that he wants. It's just, like, it's, it's hard to stop that because he has so much in his tool bag that he can pull out and you never know what's coming. So 
it just keeps you on your toes. Is it hard to, to block for a guy like that when he's cutting so much and you kind of never know where he's going to go? I mean, what's it like? No, for it's, it actually makes it easier, you know, you know, because he can always you that uh, our O line coach always tell us just block and the running back will make you right. So, you know, just being coming off the ball, being physical, you know, trying to display somebody and then just let just trying to open up a hole for him to get through because once he gets through to the second level, you know, it's just him and the linebacker, him and the safety, and I'm taking my running back every time. You mentioned earlier you grew up playing basketball and you wanted to be a basketball player. How did the athleticism required to play that game help you at all transition to being a left tackle and being quite a good one? I believe it helped my footwork a lot, but I believe it also had its downfalls, you know, like with my weight, because during basketball season I was always light. So, like, when I first got here, I had to gain a lot of weight, and, you know, that's, you know, that's like the biggest thing in the SEC, like, as an offensive tackle, you know, you have to be able to hold, hold weight and, you know, be able to hold your quickness too as well. So that's been something I've been trying to, you know, work on. You Once you got the weight on, have you been able to maintain it relatively easy, or is that a constant? Like I got to make sure that I'm eating a lot and, and making sure that I'm bulking up that way. It can make I, I've been able to hold it a little bit, but you know, you, it's still a battle. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just keep trying to put those extra pounds on every day. You know, as eat as much as you can throughout the day. You know, Cardi does a great job with our meal plan, so you know, I trust her and I trust her plans for me and the rest of the team. So I just stick to it. Now the team had the uh, food truck come in with the funnel cakes and everything. Do you enjoy doing that just occasionally, or do you have that to keep weight on all, all the time? Or I just I just look at that as like a team bonding thing for us. You know, just not always being cooped up inside the building, you know, getting out, you know, being able to just talk and catch some fresh air, you know, talk to some some teammates that, you know, are a little bit antisocial, you know, just get them to open up a little bit and, you know, talk to them, you know, figure out more about them. And I think that helps with our team bonding. So. Talking about maintaining the weight, do you have a, a go-to food, one that you're like, all right? Nachos. <laughs> I love nachos. With Florida being towards the bottom of the conference in rushing defense, how much will you guys look to go to the ground and pound their defense? Well, that's every every game, you know. Like that's that's what Georgia prides herself on running the ball. You know, it's not just it, it's no matter who we play. Like we are always going to try and run the ball and be as physical as possible. What's the biggest impact Coach Sherrill has had for the line this year? You know, he just brings a lot of juice. Like he brings a lot of juice to the table. So like. You have no choice but to be fired up when it's time to go. How does he make you better, you personally? Uh, me personally, I would just say, you know, pushing me, you know, to be the best I can be. Mm -hmm. Just all around, just pushing me, staying on me, you know, working, you know, watching extra film and just doing extra, like, cardio, you know, so because, you know, we always talk about how we're going to play four quarters of the game. So, mm -hmm. you know, we just try to, you know, for people who need it, you know, we. Trying, you know, what what day was it? Um, like Monday, we ran extra. Like mm -hmm. every day, we try to do a little bit extra running, you know, just so we, when the game time comes, you know, we were able to play all four quarters. For you, for you personally, how much do you need somebody kind of pushing and driving like that to making sure, again, that you're doing the right things? Uh, I don't. I wouldn't necessarily necessarily say I need it, but you know, it's always good to have in your back pocket from mm -hmm. time to time because you know everybody has those days where you really don't feel like doing nothing, and that extra push helps. So. Time for two more questions. You just talked about running backs. Is it hard blocking for a quarterback like Stetson to be so mobile? It's not hard like he's back that you don't know where he is. Man, he's just so little. <laughs> 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 nah, but for real, um, it really, it really isn't a, a problem, you know, because we always have a game plan, you know, that involves everybody. So as long as you stick to the game plan, everything will be okay. Gotcha. We got one more basketball question for them. Depending on your LeBron guy. If I tell you that Michael Jordan is better than LeBron James, what would you say? Uh, we got to see a one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> one -on -one. We got to see a one-on-one. -on -one. Nah, but Mike both players are up there now, man. I think both players in their prime, I think that'll be a good matchup. Yeah. Though, so. who, you, who 